For members' statements today, we will hear statements from the honourable members for the districts of Bonavista, Mount Pearl Southlands, Labrador West, St. John's East, Kitty Vitty, Harbour, Maine, and Cape St. Francis. The honourable, the member for Bonavista. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, an honour to be able to speak in the House today. Uh, when you hear Bonavista, the thing that comes to mind for many is John Cabot. However, for most people who live there, it's Biddy Fitzgerald. Biddy has been a pillar of the community for countless years, serving on council for 28 years with 20 of those as mayor. A trailblazer, Biddy was the first female elected to do the Bonavista Town Council. During these years, she's seen the good and the bad, taking it all in stride and working hard for the betterment of the town she loves. However, after 28 years, Betty decided to retire from public life. Even though Betty is leaving public life, that doesn't mean she's going to be any less active. Before and during her time as mayor, Betty was an avid volunteer. It wasn't uncommon to see her lead the charge in organizing a parade, a luncheon for seniors, promoting or sitting on several committees, or anything else that was community oriented. Betty is passionate about the Matthew and T.K. Kellaway Seniors Club, and I'm assured that she will, be, she will continue to work with these organizations. Please join me in congratulating Biddy on her many years of service to the town of Bonavista. The Honorable the Member for Mount Pearl, Southlands. Mr. Speaker, it's my privilege to stand in this Honorable House to recognize the tremendous success of a very community-minded sports organization within the city of Mount Pearl. The Mount Pearl Men's Slow Pitch Softball League began in 1978 when a group of guys came together, formed six teams, and began playing ball at St. David's Field. This proved to generate great interest within the community and has continued to thrive and grow ever since. Currently, the league is comprised of 16 teams and over 200 players who play out of the new Richard Lavanier Softball Complex named after a tremendous community volunteer and past president of the league. Much of the success of this league can be attributed to all the players, past and present, who understood and accepted the spirit of the league, which was to play ball, have fun, and meet new friends. Besides playing ball, the league is very active in the community in making numerous charitable donations and participating in various community events in Mount Pearl. There's so much more to this league than softball. It's about friendship, it's about family, it's about community. I ask all members of this Honourable House to join me in congratulating the Mount Pearl Men's Slow Pitch Softball League on 40 great years of sport, camaraderie, and of commitment to their community of Mount Pearl. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable, the member for Labrador West. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in this Honourable House today to recognize a very special group of people in Labrador West, the Labrador West Big Landers. In January, Junior Humphreys formed a special Olympics group who meet every Wednesday for events and activities such as holiday parties and cake decorations. <laughs> they now have 21 athletes and over 20 volunteers who have dedicated their time and efforts to make this a success and participate in community events like the Berry Run. Recently, the group visited the Labrador City Fire Hall, and they plan to join the Community Living Association for their annual bus ride around town during Christmas season to view all the Christmas lights. The community outreach has been tremendous. The Forestry Department asked them to participate in the annual torch run, and the community gardens has offered them a plot so growing vegetables will be in their future. Later this month, two members of Special Olympics Newfoundland and Labrador will visit Labrador West to conduct the coaches clinic. They will train volunteers who coach these athletes. I ask all, all honorable members to join me in recognizing the efforts of the volunteers and committee in making Labrador West an inclusive community. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable, the member for St. John's East, Kitty Vitty. Thank you very much, Mr. <clears throat> Speaker. Choices for Youth recently received a $25,000 Orange Door Award grant to help prevent and end youth homelessness in Canada. The grant comes from the Home Depot Canada Foundation. 
I am happy to rise to congratulate Choices for Youth for the invaluable work they do in the district of St. John's East Kitty Vitty and across the St. John's metro region. The grant will support the organization's Youth Leadership Council, a group of young people who work to break down barriers for youth. Choices for Youth is a nonprofit, charitable, community-based agency that provides housing and lifestyle development supports to youth, operating 10 core programs to support over 1,000 young people each year in the St. John's metro region. Choices for Youth is one of eight recipients across Canada of this grant. Congratulations to Choices for Youth. I ask all mon honorable members to join me in thanking them for the vital work they do for at-risk youth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable, the member for Harbour, Maine. Hear, hear. Mr. Speaker, on this Remembrance Weekend, I rise to pay tribute to the late I. Sarali Costigan. Born in July 31, 1921, Searle served as a World War II veteran, enlisting on June 6, 1940, at the age of 18. He went on to serve until August of 1946, serving in places such as the Gulf, the North Atlantic, the North Sea, and the English Channel. Following World War II, he began service with the Merchant Navy, returning home to the province in 1959. He married in 1947 to the love of his life, Mary Kay Harko of Holy Road, and raised nine children, five boys, four girls. And at the time of his passing on April 20th, 2017, at the age of 95, he had 15 grandchildren, 16 great-grandchildren. I had the pleasure last week of presenting his wife, Mary Kay Costigan, with her 96th birthday certificate. During his life, Sarah loved to volunteer with the community, especially with the Royal Canadian Legion and minor hockey. In 2012, Cyril was also given the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, which he cherished greatly. Mr. Speaker, I ask all of the members to pause for a moment as we reflect on the life of Cyril I. Costigan, an outstanding Canadian who dedicated his life to serving our great country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable the Member for Cape St. Francis. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise in this Honourable House today to recognise Jamie Wilkinson, who was awarded Music NL's Unsung Hero Award for his tireless work to foster music in our province. Jamie was raised in a very musical family in Flat Rock. His mother, Madonna, says Jamie always loved music and played his first drum kit at the age of three. Jamie played with the Celtic Fiddlers, performed with the Pit Band at the Arts and Culture Centre, and was a member of the popular band Redline. But Jamie was highest impact was fostering music through his teaching career. He left a profound and lasting mark and as he found ways to match every student with a perfect song or a piece of music to showcase the best they had to offer. Jamie accomplished all this while living with a serious heart condition. Such was his love of music, by even waiting for a heart transplant in Tranto, Jamie joined three orchestras. Jamie passed away in May at the age of 39, but his musical legacy lives on in the many students he taught and inspired. He was so deserving of the Unsung Hero Award. I ask all honorable members to join with me in remembering Jamie Wilkinson today. Rest in peace, my friend.